New day, fresh cappuccino. Is it time to take a deeper look and identify our problems? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Well, where do we need to look? Everywhere, can honestly everywhere. So consider it as a fresh start and uh, look at it in a look at everything in a different way because what we are looking for uh, usually was there for a long time unnoticed. So now we need to notice it and shout out about it very loudly. So let us start with something simple. Uh, and it's actually very simple, but very dangerous. We all talk about 40 to 80% of lubrication related failures. That number is everywhere for years, everybody can see it. There's also a lot of talk about downtime, a little bit about man hours in repair, a little bit more about spare parts. Also, that's quite a strange to me because it's relatively small money. Uh, just a little bit talk about urgent work, urgent shipping, but if you ask a simple question, what was the total cost of this bearing failing? The total cost, the real total cost, usually there's no direct and precise answer. So practically it seems that value is unknown. If it's unknown because uh, 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 it has not been defined at all, it's a problem. If it's an unknown because, uh, but, but not revealed, because it's not a good news and it calls for responsibility, it's a problem again. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to one simple, simple fact. If you have no value, you have no problem. And when there's no problem, why would you do anything about it? Okay, so our first diagnosis, no money assigned to the problem? Exactly, exactly. That, that's, that's, a, that's a very good name for the problem. Okay, so then how do we deal with that? Uh, simple. Actually, it's very simple to deal with it. Stop talking about bearings, friction, particle size, preload. Talk about money. Uh, no one among shareholders cares uh, or necessarily uh, understands at all anything about viscosity or variable load. And to be honest, they have all the rights not to understand and not to care. That's not their job. But at, they are the one who decide about budget or change to be implemented. So if you want people to understand you speak in their language, you cannot speak Swahili to Eskimos. And when you calculate the value of the problem, include everything, but I mean everything, because cost of the billing is usually negligible. $100 billing can cause $100,000 cost. But when you mention 100000 you certainly get everyone's attention. Okay, so there's our diagnosis and prescribed medicine. Is it implementation time? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I think no, not yet. We need to look further. Ask anyone a uh, simple question. Uh, how important is lubrication? That's, that's a good way to start to building a team. And if you ask that question, they will all tell you, well, it's extremely important. This is strategic. It's critical. You will see uh, you hear all different, different assessments, but they will all be very high. So I would assume that only best of the best of the highly trained engineers would be allowed to touch the grease guy. But that's not the reality because nobody wants his son to become a grease guy. It's a dirty job. It's a low paid, low respect job. So on one side you have, yes, lubrication is important, but it's only declaratively. It doesn't work that in a practice. So that means nothing has been done. Okay, so we have a diagnosis number two, hypocrisy. Can we call it that way? Absolutely, yes. It's a correct diagnosis, but just just, uh, just a tip. Don't, better don't, don't present your improvement using that word. Uh, I would use declarative importance, but hypocrisy is, 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 is a really correct word. I agree. Okay, so fair enough. So how do you deal with that? Uh, simple again. Uh, Grease guy is a person who is in more intimate contact with an asset than anyone else. Grease guy can destroy 10 electrical motors in 10 minutes, and that's a great power. But let's be, let's be optimistic. Whoever can destroy your reliability and has that power, he also has that power to make it better. So if lubrication is only declaratively important, then your assets will be healthy, of course, declaratively. Bring your grease guy with you at the meeting when you deliver a failure cost report to your management, and just ask them if you can get the funding for training for this guy. Lifetime training for the grease guy will be only a fraction of the cost of the single failure. Well, who would resist such a cute scene? Oh, that is shocking and risky, but I agree. It shows reality very clearly. Yeah, but actually we need to look further. You know, lubrication is not just a guy with a grease gun. It's, uh, it's not some isolated activity. It's a chain at the end of the day. Uh, it has three main links. Management, they, they need to make a decision, funding, support. And then lubrication engineer, he needs to build a program. And then you have a lubrication technician, he needs to execute the, pro the program. 
And all between there, you have all these fine fibers, uh, like awareness, responsibility, ownership, communication, discipline, control, and very important recognition. Now, if that chain is not properly created, if nobody creates it intentionally, it will self-create. And normally it will self-create in the wrong way. And uh, that's a disaster, actually. When that happens, when those fiber uh, fibers fail, a grease gun becomes a machine gun and the bearings got executed. So grease guy doesn't speak, engineer doesn't see, and management doesn't hear. It's a complete collapse. Okay, so that's our diagnosis number three. But what do we call it? A broken chain? It's excellent name. I agree. Broken chain. Okay, then how do we deal with this one? Well, this one is not so simple, honestly. So problem with the disease of this kind is that it kills slowly. It causes a very, very slow and, uh, and almost painless decay. So until one day you are surrounded with ruins and that, that's a disaster. So people normally ignore slow progressing and painless problems. And on top of that, this problem has several elements. So knowing that uh, in, in a strategy of Lube Expert, we, we inform some of the elements, communication, discipline, control and responsibility. So in simple words, they are already there in a Lube Expert process and you have no way to override them. So they will be implemented this way or another. The rest of them we can discuss when we start building a strategy because they are equally important. But in its essence, it consists of a lot of education, goals, translation and understanding. Of course, there is a personal responsibility and never forget personal recognition. So all that I mentioned is something that actually a leader radiates, or may I say the leader infects people with it. All right, so are we done with problems now? Uh, no, I don't think so. We are not done with the problems, but I'm done with a cappuccino. Uh, you're right. So shall we try espresso next time? I think so. Two espressos coming up. Okay, see you on Monday with an espresso, my friend. See you next Monday. Bye.